Hi everyone. Welcome to this new series of podcasts that we are starting. In this podcast, uh, the introductory podcast, Gunish and I are going to be co-hosting this podcast for you. Uh, and we are going to be talking about digitalization in the industry, in the fashion industry in particular. However, uh, the idea of this series of podcasts is to bring uh, industry leaders to this platform so that they can share their journey with all of us and talk about how they see the future unfolding. So let me introduce myself. My name is Anindya and I've been in the industry for three and a half decades and I've worked in multiple functions like merchandising, buying, sourcing, design, what have you. And I've also worked for uh, many of the key brands that are there in the Indian market today. And that is the background from which I have started my journey in uh, understanding how digitization impacts uh, a company and what kind of impact we see having in, uh, it having in the industry at a large. Let me introduce my co-host to you. My co-host is Gunish this evening. Gunish, everybody knows, is a is very passionate about digitizing the whole industry, the back end, and he's a very strong change agent himself. Wherever he goes and whoever he talks to decides to digitize. And that is, I think, the best introduction that I can have for him. Uh, and uh, of course, you will know him as the CEO of Blue Cactus. It is a software that most of the industry is using today to digitize their back end. Having said this, let me start this podcast by asking the first question to Gunish. Gunish, why don't you take us a little bit through your journey? How you came to, uh, how did you come around uh, bringing Blue Cactus to everyone? Thanks, Arandya. I'm really excited uh, to be part of this podcast and this uh, series. I'm hoping and we are hoping will actually be interesting, useful and enlightening to the people uh, and of the industry, as well as hopefully people outside the industry. So to talk about my journey, uh, like most journeys begin when you try to solve a problem, you try to solve a problem which you are dealing on a day-to-day -day basis. I come from a family which has been into garment manufacturing and exports primarily for the more than 50 years. And when I joined the business, uh, I was dealing it in a very traditional manner. So the orders would come in, we would be executing those orders. And as the business grew, we realized there was a need for digitization, controlling how the purchase orders are being raised. So very, very basic stuff. But as we evolved, we saw the benefits of digitization. And as a result of which we built our own in-house solution, this solution actually worked very well for us. And that is where Blue Cactus was born. Now, when I began to talk about this to my peers in the industry, other garment exporters, they would say, hey, we are having the same problem. Can you help us solve it? Uh, now, I come from a tech background, so I always had a little bit of a head start over others vis-a-vis -vis my peers. So what I said was, why don't you use our software and I hopefully it can help you uh, digitize your operations and improve your operations. And that's where we said, let's cr create a company called Blue Cactus, start implementing this product out to customers and to other manufacturers. So over a few years, we built a fairly strong base. Uh, we had more than 200 garment manufacturers using our software. And as we were going through this journey, we came across Arvind, and that was you, Anandya. You were on the other side of the table. I remember very distinctly. And the kind of problems you were sharing were the problems which resonated with me and things which we were trying to also solve for. And that's where the journey of uh, Blue Cactus with the retailers and brands started. You and I, I remember, worked together closely. We've implemented production, quality, compliance. And I think the benefits were so dramatic and so uh, you know, apparent to everybody that I think it became very quickly in, the, in, in about a short period of a year and a half as one of the most important applications that Arvind had. And uh, we realized that, hey, there is a great opportunity. The supply chain is so fragmented. We were solving a problem and there was nothing like this. There was absolutely nothing like this. And, and when I kind of look at why there was nothing like this, because we are in the non-glamorous part of the business, uh, Anandya. So sometimes usme bhi paisa hota hai, right? When you have, when you have, when you do non-glamorous stuff, everybody wants to be doing, you know, on the ramp show and, you know, on being on the sales side of it. But uh, like one of the big retailers ever told me once that Gunish, where the real money's in the back end. And that's really true. So we began to solve for the problems of supply chain disaggregation, visibility, 
quality improvement. So basic stuff. Uh, and, and I think that really got us going on our journey. And uh, in the last two, three years, we have the who's who of the industry today as uh, customers of Blue Cactus. And it's been a fun journey doing this. Very interesting. I, I, I love this bit about, uh, uh, you know, gla uh, glamour being on the front end and but the money being probably in the back end. Yeah, that's a super, <laughs> that's a secret, right? Don't disclose it to everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the secret sauce. Uh, right, uh, Anandya, I would love to hear from you, your journey. I mean, how Arvind, uh, and you were, you were part of Arvind and you've been uh, instrumental in their digitization journey. What were the things that you were trying to solve for? And, you know, just tell me a little bit about you as a, as a person who was part of a brand and a big, very well-known, one of the marquee retailers of the country. Uh, what, you know, how did you go about doing it and what were some of the benefits and what are some of the things that challenges that you came across? Oh, well, um, yeah, thanks for asking. That's, that's an interesting story. So I, I've been working in the industry for, uh, you know, three and a half decades now. But what had happened was I had been working mostly in the front end. So I had been mostly in the buying merchandising side. I'd spent some time in design, marketing, even sales. I had never really spent time in the back end. But uh, come 2011 end, uh, Arvind actually suddenly realized that they were manufacturing a lot of uh, garments, but every vertical in the business was making it separately. And uh, then they decided to consolidate the whole thing and they asked me to take care of this uh, whole new vertical which was created for sourcing. In fact, it was a bit of a groundbreaking thing because at that point of time, uh, centralized sourcing was not part of the way uh, the Indian industry worked. So when I took over, I realized very quickly that we were facing three critical issues. One, we could not predict properly how many, you know, when goods would come. So we had a predictability problem. Our supply chain was just not predictable. Second, it was not dependable. And because it was not dependable, it was also not predictable. And the third is it was not consistent. So sometimes when we did deliver, we were not unable to consistently keep performing. And this, these three things became the major uh, issues that we started tackling. We realized that as a company, we were losing money every month because we would make commitments to customers who, which we could not keep. So this is, uh, you know, this is, these are the three problems that we were really starting to, uh, trying to, uh, bring about. So at that point of time, of course, as you mentioned, you know, I happened, uh, I was looking for a solution. Then I, then we met. And uh, we started working jointly on some of these uh, uh, problems that we faced. But if I really look at the journey that I had in terms of digitalizing the backend, or I, I prefer using the word digitizing, uh, I would really put it into three buckets. The first was to actually just digitize the backend. So first we did it with quality. We got a whole quality function digitized. That went off extremely well. Then we actually implemented the TNA uh, for, for procurement. Then we started getting the other uh, stakeholders into the platform. And this started working and, you know, it brought about phenomenal results. Once we did this, the second uh, phase was really in terms of trying to actually uh, get a lot of analytics into place uh, and actually started looking at how to build consistency. How do we, how do we look at uh, uh, the data and see how everybody is performing? How do we continue to get them to improve their performance? And over a period of time, we realized that there were multiple aspects. We were dealing with multiple stakeholders. And this is such a fra fragmented backend. So you had uh, the fabric person, the uh, raw materials person, the garment person, the designer, the buyer, and everybody having a point of view. And this whole platform got them all together. And I think that un unleashed a lot of uh, efficiencies for us. I think final journey that we kind of went on uh, went on to was, of course, you know, when we started looking at how we can bring predictability, we started building predictive analytics and that played a very, very major role in terms of uh, how we were able to predict the outcome of whatever actions we were doing. Because eventually, you know, finally what happens is everybody looks at the final state or what, what we call the lag, lag uh, results, but nobody actually looks at uh, the lead in terms of what we do that leads to those results. 
so this was something that uh, really helped us actually build uh, the whole platform. The other thing, if I really look at, uh, you know, in terms of this journey, honestly speaking, was, uh, was the change management that was required. One of the things that uh, we realized very early on is that it is not easy for people to change the way they're working. And that was a very, very major revelation that we had. And then we did multiple things in the back end to actually change the way we work. We we changed our SOPs, our ways of working. There were so many things that we did to try and actually make sure that the whole thing worked. So we realized that just putting a system doesn't work. You really need to make effi- the whole thing efficient. You need to also build processes around what you do. So in a nutshell, that was, you know, how my journey with uh, on digitalization has been. Uh, so having, uh, 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 you know, kind of... Uh, I think you've talked about uh, this uh, very interesting journey you went through. And I think there's one question uppermost in people's mind who're probably looking at this podcast is, okay, great, we did this change management, you did this whole exercise. What were the real benefits? I mean, what was the ROI? Eventually, to pesa bolta, right? Money talks. So I would just put you on that spot and maybe if you might not want to disclose the numbers, but uh, would be great for the benefit of the audience of where you saw some tangible specific benefits and what were the ROI for this exercise you did. That is an excellent question. So let me respond in a few parts. Uh, First thing is, uh, it's a very interesting question because today digitalization has almost become a fashion. People talk about it, but when you ask them why they want to do it, nobody really knows. They don't have an answer. And uh, I have been talking to a lot of people in the industry and none of them uh, really are able to define this very well. So right in the beginning, when we started doing this program, and I'll share a small anecdote with you. I had, uh, I had tried presenting this whole, uh, whole project saying that, look, this is what we are going to do. This is, uh, you know, and this I think is going to be good for the company. And I was asked a very straight question. What is the benefit? Is it going to add to the top line or is it going to add to the bottom line? If it doesn't do any of this, don't bother. And we were at about 87%, uh, and the effort that took to bring to that 87 or 80 percent on time uh, in full kind of a uh, number was huge. We had a very, very large team. We were making a huge effort to get there. And like I said, it was not consistent. Only we knew how we were getting there. And it was not an effort that we could keep up. However, uh you know, the management did not see it that way because they were looking at 87% and they said, hai na, ek do percent aur bada de na. and we should be fine. Uh, why do you need a, why do you need to digitize the backend? So let me talk about it in a few things. One was, how do you actually keep this consistent? How do you make sure that every season or month on month, the number does not dip? Because what happens is most procurement businesses are also very people dependent. So people play a very large part in the efficiency. You have good people, they give you very good results. Those people leave, suddenly your results start dipping and you don't know what happens. The same team is then unable to deliver. How do you get across that? Another problem we realized is a lot of data was residing in multiple laptops. People leave, data goes away and then you get into meetings and you don't even realize what is happening. People are saying, what happened to this order? And you're like, oh, where is that order? We don't even know that order exists because it is simply not on the system. It is on somebody's laptop. There are discussions going on on product, uh, you know, that get lost. Somebody wanted a certain cost, but the person leaves or the person is on leave. Nobody else takes up the mantle. How do you get, get across these problems? How do you ensure that you consistently deliver at that level? So, uh, you know, to answer it very simp- in very simply, Tendulkar became Tendulkar not just because he hit one innings and a single century. He was consistent. The whole point is bringing that consistency into your performance, right? That is the one big thing. Secondly, what it does is when you consistently perform and keep delivering, a lot of buffers that your uh, that the sales teams and and the product teams put into their planning 
starts going out because they, the end result is very, very defined. Everybody knows more or less what they're going to get. That unleashes a lot of value in the back end, whether it is in terms of inventory turns, uh, whether it is uh, a better serviceability to the consumer, uh, to the customer. The third thing that happens is there every month and you know, any business will tell you this and uh, you can, I mean, if they're being absolutely honest about it, that they lose a good 10 to 15% of sales month on month because the goods don't reach on time. Of course, they capture the sales the next month, but they lose it for that month and that many shelf days are lost in terms of the inventory not being on the shelf, right? And hence that much sale is lost. So actually getting the goods consistently in time actually results in higher sales, which then results in higher profitability. Because if goods go on time, they get more time to sell and hence they result in higher profitability. The third thing that happens, frankly speaking, is inventory turns dramatically go up when you are consistently delivering. So these are three things that happen. Unfortunately, the problem that happens is in any company at any point of time, there are multiple projects going on to either improve sales or improve profitability or improve inventory turns. So every season, every year, these projects will go on. So it becomes very, very difficult to actually turn around and say that this benefit accrued out of this particular thing, but it does accrue. Uh, if we actually study companies, we will see that companies which have had a stable backend have consistently delivered on top line and bottom line. Of course, assuming that the companies didn't do, you know, any major goof up in any other uh, particular uh, thing. The other thing that that has that we have seen and while you know, these are some of the generic things I'm talking about uh, and like I, I will not be able to reveal numbers. But definitely what we noticed was that we were, you know, after say about four years, we were doing almost, I would say one and a half times the work we were doing four years back with half the workforce that we had. So we were able to actually reduce our workforce, increase their efficiency of delivery and that unleashes a lot of value whether it is on cost whether it is on uh, 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 sales, whether it is simply the efficiency in the back end that it is delivering. And I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg. There are many other benefits to transparency to uh, uh, because what it does is it releases a lot of time for other, uh, uh, you know, other departments that are there in the kind of meetings that they have. It brings about a lot of wholesomeness in work uh, in the, you know, working process, etc. So I, I, this is a very, I know this topic is very close to my heart. So I know, I, I think Gunish, you kind of touched, I, I may have taken a lot more time than I should have. Uh, well, sorry for great. that. Uh, uh, it was great. So Ananda, and, any and, other question? I want to tell to everybody that uh, what your team has done, uh, I think it's a real case study in terms of how you went about uh, this journey. It's not never easy. Change management is tough. Uh, understand it because we've been part of so many change managements uh, across the industry. But I think if once you are on it, you realize after a little while, how could you be doing going back to the you know old ways of working? There was no way you could go back to the old ways of working. So uh, very interesting, Anandya, uh, and I think uh, it's it was it was it has been for us from you know as a software vendor and as a partner to Arvin, uh, it was very interesting for us to also watch and be part of that journey. No, it was very interesting uh, working uh, with Blue Cactus and making this happen. But anyway, let me now go to the next question, which I need to ask. So how do you see this market moving forward? And where do you think there is and why do you think there is a need to change? Okay, so I think the industry and particularly what COVID has done, uh, there was a certain trend in the industry and COVID essentially accelerated that. So what is happening is with the advent of D2C brands, with the new age brands coming in, there has been a completely turnaround and a completely different way that companies are wanting to and having to operate in. So it's gone from the days of push. Now it is a pull. So what that basically means is that you, rather than producing thousand pieces, putting it out in front of the customer and then hoping that they will sell, 
and the customer buys what you've already produced. The model now is that you produce a small quantity. You don't need to have online has completely changed the way the paradigm of how the kind of quantity you need to produce and you now have unlimited shelf uh, e-commerce gives you that capability. And what is happening is that you test what is selling well and then you quickly produce what is selling well and don't produce what is not selling well. So essentially what is needed and what is the, the companies which will thrive will be the ones which have an agile supply chain. And not only agile, they are just agile. That means they are they are quick, their ability to quickly react to whatever the market conditions are changing. So for example, in COVID, I mean, you know, there would be a lockdown and the stores will stop. So what would you you'll be you'll be saying, Oh, don't don't supply me goods. And then suddenly the you know the lockdown would open and everybody would rush and start buying garments. And then you suddenly running out of inventory. So you had these huge ups and downs in the the way the demand was there. And it's not as if post-COVID it has changed. It has not gone back to the original. This demand variation is actually an uncertainty has gone up. So gone are the days where you could plan one year in advance and then get the goods there and plan it out. So I think that is one very dramatic, big change which is happening in the industry. Inventory is now a four-letter word. So you should not be carrying inventory. I mean, look, talk to any industry, talk to any retailer, talk to any big uh, analyst also. They always are trying to focus what is the inventory turn? How can I generate more sale by keeping my inventory the same or even lower? And I think the only way to do it is being able to quickly know what is selling well and then reacting to that and, and creating a supply chain which is agile. Now that only happens if you are able to have a connected supply chain. So one of the problems we have seen and I think there's a trend now is you know, most of the PLMs and the ERPs used to be within the four walls of a company. So that means I can improve my own efficiency. But really, uh, my efficiency is also dependent on the efficiency of my supply chain. If my supply chain, uh, you know, takes 10 days to react to something, then my reaction time is not going to be eight days, right? I'm dependent on my supply chain. Now, what we are seeing is this whole global trend towards a very integrated supply chain, data-driven decisions. So you've talked about, you know, people, you know, taking away, you know, the, the information is in somebody's laptop. So I call it about institutionalizing experience. So how do we institutionalize experience in a company? Because the experience of the company should not walk out of the doors of the company once the person walks out of the company, right? So I think a few yeah. trends in terms of agility, deep integration with the supply chain, lower inventory turns, lower inventory, which means higher inventory turns, big bigger width and lower depths and of course the complete digitization as a result of which huge improvements in productivity of people because salaries of people is not are not coming down but the customer is no longer willing to pay you more money for the same product every year on year so i think those efficiency gains have to come about and that's going to come through productivity and finally having the right product in front of the customer at the right time so i think those are some trends that we are seeing in the industry and and again it's not just india centric this is the same you go all over the world you talk to any retailer big retailer global retailer and i've worked with some of the you know top people like h&m jc penny etc and they all talk about how they can create a agile supply chain so so that's those some of the key trends that i see in the industry very very interesting very interesting so Anandya, you talked about change management and I think that's one of the big elephant in the room. When a lot of uh, C-level executives, when they're thinking about you know, digitization and, and you know, looking at great softwares um, and a lot of times they talk about yes, to badi hai, but how do we make this happen? So could we delve a little bit more about how did you do this change management? What would be your, let's say, five things that you would want or you did you know, let's say, just give us about where, how should somebody go about doing change management? Or what, are the, what are the things you guys did successfully, uh, which could, you know, be great help to others as well? You are all secret sauce, but but it's a very, 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 very interesting question. So some of the simple things that we did, first, we started doing reviews on the system. So it all our review uh, formats were b based on this uh, reviews that we were doing directly on the data based on the system right 
Secondly, the thing that we did very simply was we put all the KPIs of every uh, division or every person on the system. So, and we were mapping their KPIs directly by what work was happening on the system. Third, the bonuses and uh, variable pay that was happening was also based on the data that was on the system. This was this this was very very intrinsic to actually getting people to start using the system itself. And the final one was you know building a no excuse culture for actually uh, data on the system because a lot of times people come and tell you ki wo to data dikh nahi raha par actually hai you know see it is my, on my excel but it's not there so the point is you know the having the uh, the courage to actually say no to looking at data uh, in any other form another thing that happens you know in the indian indian uh, uh, back uh, industry in the back end is mo- uh, most of the companies are not very organized they are not really high up on the supply chain matrix in terms of where they should be so for them to suddenly move into a system becomes very very difficult so of course we are lucky that uh, uh, you know uh, blue cactus has a very deep understanding of the whole industry and they kind of help people handhold them and actually help them uh, uh, get away but it's not something that is easily done and you know the two things that if people can avoid you will always find that there are people who are very cynical in any company so anything that is new matlab yaar ye to bakwas hai ye to hona nahi chahiye this whole attitude can kill any new initiative so any company that is actually trying to uh you know do something new develop a system or a process has to manage this attitude make sure that this does not eat uh, uh eat into the whole uh, morale of the team that is doing it ki mujhe to pata hi tha you know ye to kaam nahi karega every time some problem happens and the last thing which people should be very very careful of is transparency while we think transparency is great the management thinks transparency is great a lot of people in the system who are working don't really like transparency because it kind of exposes what they do and then they are having to they have to defend it and a lot of times they create a lot of issues just to explain why something is not showing in the system because they may not have done the work and this is something that uh, i have personally seen over the last 4 uh, 4 and a half years how difficult it is to push transparency into a system so the four simple things that i talked about in terms of using the system for kpis bonuses uh, uh you know uh reviews etc the two things that we should be care of careful of in terms of uh, uh in terms of whether it is uh, uh you know uh, cynicism in the system or it is uh, uh, transparency and lastly the fact that when companies try to jump into a digitization bandwagon without having processes existing processes that they are working on whether it's on excel or in some salience of process and they try to move from 0 to 100 initially that has its own problems so if these things can be taken care of most companies can do an amazing job of managing the whole thing and i i'm just trying to put it in a nutshell but that's how what it is so i hope that kind of made uh, sense you know uh, uh now uh, you know having asked that i just wanted to ask you now uh, you've been doing this with a lot of the who's who in the uh, in the industry and there are a whole lot of uh, international customers that you are also talking to so what are the uh, what are what are they doing to adopt the technology uh, uh and what do you feel that is that you know things what prevents companies from adopting good technology so what are the international companies doing and what are you know what are the things that you feel adopts i mean just a bit of both sides okay so i would like to group companies and uh, who into maybe two three categories so one is a company which is not even aware it has it has a problem so they say you know what for us this lead time is fine this otif is fine actually we really have a problem somewhere else and uh, so that kind of so you have you have a quite a few of those companies where the focus is a lot more on the front end and the focus is on on and really not a very strong understanding of how supply chain is affecting the sales right second are companies which understand it uh, and and 
you know, will 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 be able to uh, you know look at that their sourcing team understands there is a problem, but is the sourcing team really empowered enough to be able to take those decisions? Because typically in 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 corporations, it's the you know it well, Anandya. So it's the salespeople who are the star guys who are bringing in the you know business, who are the ones who are probably key decision makers. So you will find situations where company will have a lot of tools on the front end. But the back end has bare bones. I mean, they have nothing there because that decision is always kept as a lower priority. And you look at analysts uh, when they ask questions from their CEO, nobody's talking about supply chain agility or nobody's talking about what their OTIFs are. People are talking about same store sales growth, et cetera, et cetera. Those pe- metrics are being talked about, which really not, don't get to the crux of you know, how these numbers are being changed. Third is, I think there is a lack of understanding of tech now apparel and fashion being a very fashion centric business the people from in the industry are from the fashion business right they're not techies they don't understand intrinsically technology is not natural to them right there are people who understand technology of course i'm not saying you need to be a engineer to understand technology but a lot of people don't understand technology kind of stay away from it and i think uh, that there is an inherent uh, lack of understanding of technology and i've seen that across the board it's not just the indian context it's the global context that is uh, one of the re- real reasons why sometimes people are skeptical about adopting technology per se what i would suggest and and i think uh, we'll talk about is and i wanted to add to the question that you raised in terms of how you're seeing uh, the trend internationally i think one there is a very strong trend towards traceability and transparency in the supply chain, particularly in the Western markets where consumers have become very aware. They don't, if they buy a t-shirt, they want to know how much water was consumed. They want to know where did the cotton come from? Is it, did it come from a source which, where there was child labor used, right? So I think there's a lot of pressure on international brands to have transparency in the supply chain. And I think that can only happen through digitization if you have a completely integrated supply chain. So this is one immediate uh, problem that larger companies, especially internationally, are focusing on. And I think from that, the companies are trying to figure out, can they make their vendor base more nimble and agile? And how do you ensure that the vendors start adopting technology? Because you and I know they are typically not, most of the vendors are not very technology savvy. They are not very digitally savvy. And I think this is the other trend in terms of How do you make your supply chain more aware of technology and give them the tools so that they are able to become better service providers to the larger brands? I think these are some international trends and some of the things that I've seen when we've gone about talking to companies. So if I may uh, ask you just one quick question before uh, you kind of sum it up. Uh, You didn't speak about reaction time and how quick reaction time is kind of uh, helped out. Reaction time, yes. Uh, so I think in terms of reaction time, you're talking about, let's say the gold standard on reaction time is Sheen, right? So everybody talks about Sheen. You want to become a Sheen. Oh, how can we become a Sheen, right? Now, how did Sheen become Sheen? Now, Sheen is a Chinese company, so it's a black box typically like most Chinese companies. But Sheen became Sheen because they clearly understood their deep integration that they need to have end-to-end. So in their case, from the time they spot a marketing trend to the time the goods are being produced, it's in a matter of one day, two days. It's not as if they're taking months to decide on it. So they don't have somebody planner sitting and saying, acha data lekarao, let's see what the sales information is. Then I'm going to prepare a nice Excel sheet. I'm going to create an OTB, et cetera, et cetera. What they have done is digitized this entire process and created an extremely hyper agile, I won't even call it agile, it's a hyper agile supply chain. So I think reaction time is something which is critical. It's not easy to get there because most companies have legacies, most companies have inertia, and change management is not that simple in companies. So it sounds great, however, it is a journey. And, and I tell every customer of mine, don't expect to go from zero to 100 from day one or day 10. This is a journey. You take your steps, you put in the plumbing, 
So I call this whole digitization first is the plumbing. You call it digitizing the supply chain. It's the plumbing. And once the plumbing is in place, everything is connected. Then you can start pushing in more water through the plumbing that you've created. And I think that's where the real benefits start really accruing to organizations. And I think uh, if I can tell you very clearly from the trend that we are seeing, any company or anyone, and I'm trying to plug my software so obviously people can... People think it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm biased, which I am. But honestly speaking, I think if in today's day and age, anyone is thinking of having those one-year lead cycles, anyone thinking that I can go back to the old ways of working, I think they're going to be dinosaurs. They're going to be history. And the world is changing a lot faster than we thought it was. And I think that's where, uh, you know, the whole journey is. And again, uh, somebody said, you know, the, the start of, I don't know. The, all right, Anandya, great. Uh, I think it was a very interesting conversation and I'm sure the people listening to this podcast would have found and taken a few takeaways from this uh, podcast. I think both you and I have gone through a, in, an interesting journey and this journey continues. So there is no destination. It is, it is always a journey and we're always trying to improve. We're always trying to uh, see how we can do better each and every time. Uh, I think some of the key important takeaways that I would like to, you know, highlight is first, I think digitization is the way forward. Companies that don't adopt digitization will probably have problems. And that's an understatement. And I think the next big, uh, you know, gains will be through digitization and the CEOs need to really start understanding how digitization can really help. Uh, the, you know, the organization and really improve the numbers. And uh, I think some of the numbers are really startling when you start looking at inventory turns of going up by two, three times. I think those numbers are really amazing. Um, and just, uh, I think those are some key takeaways. Um, I would also like to just thank the people who are listening to this podcast. I hope they found it interesting. I hope you like this podcast. And I hope, uh, please do give us suggestions and your feedback and comments on how you found this. And of course, what are the, some of the other topics that you would like us to focus on as we go through this podcast? Our objective is to make this a forum whereby we are able to bring together industry leaders and sometimes people from outside the industry, sometimes they have a better perspective of what we should be doing. And the idea is to be able to share ideas, share experiences and really all of us to benefit from this joint experience. So thank you so much for being part of this. Uh, Anandya, thank you so much for organizing this. And uh, guys, uh, really appreciate you listening to this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.